continues to watch over us as we celebrate here in the parish the second Sunday of Lent. Jesus calls us to be open to his call of life, death, and resurrection. And through his forgiveness and mercy, we receive God's mercy always to open our hearts to conversion and transformation. Watch over us and guide us in the Lent and season. May God bless us, St. Teresa, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Welcome and good evening, everyone. Amen. Thank you for coming today on this beautiful sunshine day uh, to celebrate, um, we're almost in the middle of the Lenten season, on the third Sunday of Lent. And we're truly thankful that we could be here together uh, to sing quietly, uh, to pray together, and uh, to for ask God's mercy. So in openness and really in thanksgiving, we just, we're truly thankful that we can be here, uh, God willing and safety uh, and God's security always to, to bring what's on our mind to God today and that God will hear us and help us in this, um, um, see, um, this season of uh, openness and conversion. So we just take a moment in silence and we pause for a moment and, uh, as we um, prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. God have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life amen let us pray O God author every mercy and all goodness who in fasting prayer and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin look graciously on in this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up in your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that your, the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The soul, the rule. 
of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of the reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then they said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and you raise it up in three days. But Jesus was speaking about the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus on his part would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and he knew no one to testify about human nature for he himself knew what was within the human person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I've been hearing a little bit the last couple of days and I don't know, uh, Catholic Radio on today uh, about, um, a little bit on the news last night, about the, uh, the Pope's, or any Pope's, first visit to the country of Iraq. And of course, that's been in the news just the last couple of days. And again, again with the pandemic, should he be there? And that's always a question of concern. Um, but one thing that on the Catholic radio said today was, and I tried to find the exact words that he said, but I couldn't find them today. Um, he's been there doing many, many things with other, um, with the um, um, uh, the head of the Shia, the Sunnis, and also they had um, in Ur, where Abraham was from. Uh, prayer service all, all different denominations uh, but he said uh, I guess before he left uh, for Rome from Rome he said I want to go there as um, a person on a pilgrimage a journey I want to go there as a human person as a person who sins and I want to learn uh, from them about the life and of course we know that many places like Mosul for example a highly Christian area uh, was bombed and there were many killings there uh, of Christians and uh, just like in Jerusalem and in Israel many of the Christians are leaving for uh, America Canada Australia and many other places in Europe because it's just so difficult to live there in um, Iraq so he's really going to listen to uh, the Muslims all different um, leaders and really say that I am here to listen to your history and uh, what, what's going on so it's really pretty profound so if you get a chance to go online or here or about that on the news tonight. Just see what's going on there because it's really uh, for the first time about Pope going to Iraq. I know Pope uh, John Paul wanted to go, but then it wasn't safe enough to go, so he couldn't go. Uh, but just really profound because there are many Christians that live uh, in the um, Arab countries. We don't we, we don't hear about them very often. So it's good to really pray for them and um, know that they, they they're living there is a very difficult thing. So we pray for them today. But I mentioned that about what Pope Francis said because one of the key themes in the readings uh, this weekend uh, talks about um, Jesus' mercy. Uh, and one of the things that he did um, in a prayer service today, Pope Francis talked about the Beatitudes, that their attitudes of learning, their attitudes of openness, attitudes of asking to receive. And again, that's what Lent is all about. And then we see in the gospel, really profound, of course, now when John, we were, we were marked last week, now we're in John for a couple of weeks. Because it was written after the destruction of the temple. The people that would have heard this story 
over into the temple have been destroyed. But also we see that what Jesus is talking about, he's talking about himself, that I will be destroyed, but I'll, I'll, I'll be raised up in three days. So of course we remembered that, we remembered what he did. But again, a lot of people, as we saw in the second reading, and also in the first reading about the serpent uh, on the pole in what was before the Ten Commandments, and also in the Gospel, that people look for signs. They want to know for sure what's going on, who is this God, I need to know everything about everything. And so part of life is a mystery. In part of life, we don't have all the answers. But the, what the readings were trying to tell us, especially the first reading, they were guidelines. They were precepts. They were ways to learn about how God wants us to live. Now, none of us live perfect, none of us, we don't live perfectly in those laws. We know that laws are broken. We know that laws are hard to follow sometimes. But one really profound line I thought in the, in the first reading I want to share with you um, said that those that stray, uh, uh, those that stray, that reject me, and we can reject God sometimes in our own selfishness. But then, but then uh, the writer Exodus says that the but showing love um, to me uh, for the ten thousandth generation, uh, I will bless them with steadfast love, those who love me and try to keep my commandments. Well, even though God knows we're going to break laws sometimes, He says, "But I will show steadfast love forever and forever." to many generations. And that's what in the New Testament, the Beatitudes are all about. To be kind, merciful, loving, um, humble, um, maybe persecuted, because we're gonna get persecuted by our faith and in society. We will get persecuted. And the most important thing is, is that an underlying theme also is that when Jesus talked about the temple, talked about himself, he said, in human terms, we're broken, but in God's terms, we can be forgiven. Though we can't forgive ourselves, we need God's forgiveness, we need God's mercy, God's love, God's on, ongoing uh, direction in our lives. We can't always do it ourselves, whether we have a spouse or a friend or a mentor or someone in our life, hopefully, that's like being God to us, that we can't do it alone. None of us can do it alone. Uh, the rule says, be your own strength, be your own person. And we should be in one way, but in another way, we, we, we need God. All of us need God. We cannot do it alone. And that's why we need Lent. We need a time of conversion, a learning, and receiving gifts. So, again, as I mentioned two weeks ago, what grace or what mercy or what, what thing or what experience do I need to receive this Lenten season? May God bless you knowing that the mercy is offered to us by Jesus in reconciliation and confession and on mercy. But are we able enough to receive that? Uh, are we strong enough to receive God's mercy? We're, good, we're not good enough, but we are good enough because Jesus, God says, you're not good enough. But what God actually says is, even though we're not, we're, 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 we're sinners and we're going we, we, we're, we, we get lost sometimes, is that that mercy forgiveness is always, always, always offered. Always offered to you and I. Always offered to you and I. So may God's mercy fill our hearts and our minds and know that it's offered to us through Jesus Christ who loves us and lives in our hearts. So may God bless you and be open to the grace of Lent uh, this season.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring to God on the third Sunday of Lent our special prayers from ourselves, from our community, and from the world. For church leaders who teach with the wisdom and courage and zeal that come from the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord For peaceful discernment in the hearts of those called to leadership and equality, we pray to the Lord. For all those who desire freedom from oppression in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord for protectors of the earth around the world who care for species and preserve the biodiversity of the earth, our common home, we pray to the Lord. Lord for ourselves called to believe the message of Jesus and those in the need of healing and strength in mind, body, or spirit, and for their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. We also pray for life from uh, natural birth to natural um, death, the God which over us in life. For this we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, mark with the sign of faith and all grieve their loss, especially for Morris Downey and Alva Givlin. For them we pray to the Lord. And for all the needs that we carry in the quiet of our hearts this day. For these we pray to the Lord. And also this Mass is offered for Jacqueline LaChapelle and for Cheryl Lenover. For them we pray to the Lord. First of all, God, we thank you for hearing these special prayers and the ones in our hearts to Jesus, our brother and savior, for he lives forever and ever. Amen.
Now, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on works of charity in participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they would be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and your daughters, now with all the heavenly realms and all the dominions and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory without end as we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy the for the gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and unto willingly into his own passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thelgus, our bishop of the clergy, and all the people of God, especially in Iraq. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep on the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Saints, Saint Teresa of Avila, who please you throughout the ages, may be married to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, 
we dared to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace you grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Offer now a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is a, a letter on the uh, bulletin board going out, uh, sent to us yesterday by uh, Family Life Office and Bishop Crosby, again about Bill C-7, about um, assisted dying, they want to pass it with more access to um, for disabled and those who have mental illnesses. So please, we have to, we have to pray that, I know people have a lot of disabilities, and um, that is, um, well, it just uh, we have to be very cautious when it comes to um, people with different um, other things in their life and uh, they might not be thinking you know always straight at the time so we have to pray that God will um, help us with this not the uh, essential the C7 um, um, bill expanding the access to euthanasia so we have to pray for that and you can also uh, contact the government and it's um, we put on our website eventually and then it's also on the bulletin board it has two pages and that's on the bulletin board thank you for listening to that in the bulletin is also on the uh, outside as well too and online. We invite you to come to weekday mass on Tuesday to Friday. You're all welcome to come and join us for that. We also have a Thursday evening reflection at seven o'clock online and also we have our Wednesday online reflection. Uh, I'm working on my theme for this week so Jeff doesn't know that yet so I'm working on the theme for our Wednesday reflection and that's coming up as well too. Now from again um, two weeks ago now um, again, uh, I think we have, uh, because our, um, our construction people are very busy, uh, we have 32 orders of birdhouses. You see something new? We've got a, a chimney now. So um, they, they're always changing something, these uh, production people, you know. So um, with, we have 32 orders so far, and they're not all made yet. So there are some people at the back, some assistants at the back of the church out in the narthex with some of your kits already. There was one lady, we when I, Jeff wasn't sure, I'm well, sorry, Jeff's age, he's getting a little forgetful. So he wasn't sure about who the person was. So if you're not sure, we can uh, answer your question at the back. So again, um, birdhouses, and you can still order birdhouses um, in the next week or two. So we'll have the company in production going for a few weeks in the hall. So you can order a birdhouse. Um, actually, one that I made actually got sold, so someone wanted to buy it. I don't know why, but they wanted to buy it. <laughs> so that, there's still birdhouses, that you can order those birdhouses anytime. Again, we have Season of the Cross, uh, 6.30 on Tuesday. Uh, conventions, 4 o'clock or by appointment. And the biggest thing is, you got to save yourself for um, Friday night, for if, if you like fish, or give it away to somebody else. Uh, the fish fry uh, at Grill on the Green at um, a nice little, just a, a nice little feast there. So again, don't forget you can. Uh, it's in the bulletin or online. But the fish fry, come and support if you can. And uh, I think that's all it. And we pray for Morris Downey, whose funeral is here in the church on Monday morning. And um, again, Jeff just will. He 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 would get the orders during the week. So we'll just um, no more no more orders. And again, I always want to thank Alex and Deborah, Deborah and Alex again working together. They're just doing this for a little weeks now again. So again, it's nice to have music. So I want to thank them as well too. And thank you for your prayers. And that's it. That's it. It's not, it's not five to six yet. So that's it. That's good. I'm always checking the clock because I'm a Catholic. I'm a Catholic, you know. Check the clock. So thank you all for coming and thank you for bringing the sunshine. It's not dark yet. I think that's it. Any questions you have for me, go see me after Mass. The Lord be with you. My Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let's go now, peace, glorifying the Lord by our life. Thanks be to God. We'll have one, one go first, then two, then three, and then four last will be first eventually.